why should your right to freedom of speech trump a trans person's right not to be offended? Because in order to be able to think, you have to risk being offensive. I mean, look at the conversation we're having right now. You know, like you're certainly willing to risk offending me in the pursuit of truth. Why should you have the right to do that? It's been rather uncomfortable. Uh, you've connected a lot with a lot of young men, lots of different people, but young men yeah. particularly seem to, you know, find something in your message. Yeah. I'm a young man. I'd like yeah. to be improved, please. Yeah. I want to stop being a pathetic weasel. Yeah, that would be good. Clean up your room. I don't know how you can go out and protest the structure of the entire economic system if you can't keep your room organized. What are the limits of that idea, though? Because you can have a lovely clean room, yeah. but if for my generation, you know, we're looking down the barrel of climate change, we can't afford a house, some people can't get work, university education's unaffordable, like there are these huge massive problems in society and the political economy that are also going to, you know, screw us over in the big picture that the clean room isn't going to necessarily fix. If you're going to fix complicated problems, you have to learn how to fix simple problems first. I want to know, what is your answer uh, to young people for some of the really big uh, uh, problems facing humanity, like the, you know, climate catastrophe, like economic crisis, like the precarious job market, because they just don't, like, you talk all this much about uh, individual responsibility. Most of us are never going to be able to afford uh, to have all of these assets to have responsibility over. So what is your advice beyond banal comments like clean your room? It's actually rather difficult to answer a question that ends with your comments are banal politely. I would consider that more of an opinionated personal and political statement than actually a question. So why don't you try reformulating that so that there's an actual question there. A trans woman is a real woman. <laughs> I don't really like the way those questions are formulated. You know, I don't know what that means. What do you mean a real woman? Well, she I'm asking you, in your mind, you know, it depends what you think a real woman is, but do you think a trans woman is a woman? No. Why not? Because I think that women are capable, generally speaking, of having babies and they have female genitalia and they have an XX chromosome and, and I think the biological markers are relevant. I'm interested in people being able to have different choices and, um, and having equality of outcome. Aha, well so, the overwhelming proportion of people who are in prisons are male. Now do you want to equalize that, just out of curiosity? I what about bricklayers? They're 99% male. And, the f and we've got about three quarters of, of the population now in universities mm -hmm. in the humanities and social sciences are female. Yeah. Are we going to equalize that? And men, men work more longer hours. They work more dangerous jobs. They're more likely to move. They're more likely to work outside. They're more likely to participate in jobs in the STEM fields that are scalable. They make more money for those reasons. And that's all hidden under the idea that the reason that men and women make different amounts of money is because of their gender. Pearson, do you have any comments on the Nazi presence at your protest? The presence of Nazis and white supremacists assaulting people at your protest. Do you have any comment on that? Yeah, I don't like Nazis. So. Well, that's, deb that's highly debatable. That's highly debatable. Actually, I mean, one it's of the absolutely that... true because there's never been a secular humanist government on the planet. I don't know. I think the Soviets were pretty secular No, humanist. they... <laughs> then, oh, I know with, the... with, all, with all due apologies, you do not know the first thing about what secular humanism is. You should read the secular humanist man. Oh, I'm, I'm very glad I put you on the spot. <laughs> Well, I'm you get my, that I have no, but you get my point. Speech. You get my point. It's like you're you're doing what you should do, which is digging a bit to see what the hell's going on, so and that you, is what you should do. But I, you're exercising you think... your freedom of speech to certainly risk offending me, and that's fine. I think you, more power to you, as far as I'm concerned. So you haven't sat there, and I'm just trying. I'm just trying to work that out. I mean. Ha, gotcha. You have got me, you have got me. I'm trying to work it's about that. History. You've written the idea that women were oppressed throughout history is an appalling theory. They haven't had a great time though, have they? Who, who has had a great time in history? But men have had less of a Really, have time. they? Have they? By the what time? standard? By what standard? Well, I'm just saying if you're a woman- How about it war? Took, yeah, but it took longer for women to get the vote and women belong to their husbands. And in this country, one woman dies every week from domestic violence. A man dies like once a month, I believe, in that same cause. Like, aren't there some clearly obvious things that, that uh, women are there a is, there, victim of there are as a result of their gender? There are inequalities in the catastrophes that the genders are subject to. And so, look, first of all, we, there's some things we got to get straight. History is a rough business. Everybody had it rough. 
1895, the typical Westerner lived on less than a dollar a day, which is absolute poverty by today's standards, right? And so we, people were brutally poor for the, almost the entire course of human history. It was rough. You say, well, did men or women have it worse? It's like, well, you know, that's a complicated question. But you, one of the things you can say is everybody had it pretty damn bad. And then Marxists say, well, that wasn't real Marxism. What it really means, and I've thought about this for a long time, it's the most arrogant possible statement anyone could ever make. It means, if I would have been in Stalin's position, I would have ushered in the damn utopia instead, that, instead of the genocidal massacres, because I understand the doctrine of Marxism and everything about me is good. It's like, well, think again, sunshine. I'm not suggesting in the least, and have never suggested that there's no domain for social action. I'm suggesting that people who don't have their own houses in order should be very careful before they go about reorganizing the world, which happens in many ways. I see a backlash against masculinity and a, and a sense that there's something that there's something toxic about but what, masculinity But what is this idea of being such. over... What, why is society overly feminized? Well, I didn't ever say that society was overly feminized. So if we're going to discuss my views, we should use my actual words. Women got full legal rights. They will have the right to determine what language I use, especially when it's backed by punitive legislation. And when the words that are being required are the constructions, they're artificial constructions of people I regard as radical ideologues whose viewpoint I do not share. That's pure narcissism at work, by the way. A question uh, for Professor Peterson. Um, why do you feel that someone's personal gender identity and pronouns infringes your free speech? Can one not also argue, based on your interpretation, that professors can use racial slurs in their classroom um, and the, that the inability to do so would violate their freedom of speech? There's a difference between saying that there's something you can't say and saying that there are things that you have to say. And I regard these made up pronouns, all of them, as the neologisms of radical PC authoritarians. Do you understand that? And I don't, I'm not a fan of that sort of person. And the reason I'm not a fan of that sort of person is because I've done my homework. I've read everything I can get my hands on in the development of authoritarian political systems, and I know the literature inside out and backwards. And I am not going to be a mouthpiece for language that I detest. And that's that. The whole patriarchy thing. I think you have no idea how pernicious and dangerous it is. Well, no, you know, I don't. I really don't. Go on. Throughout history. When